Hey guys, Basil and Will from Grayson Hobby, and we're going to hopefully go over the most asked question we get ever. Setting up your quad in Betaflight. Yeah. So Alright, like always, if this video you find it useful and helpful, hit that subscribe button and be sure to support Grayson Hobby if it's a pack of props, batteries, the quad, jumper Every radios, little bit helps. everything. Uh, everything ships from right here, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, located right outside Atlanta, Georgia. It's usually about two days to the entire east coast of the country. Also check out our Facebook group. Um, there's a lot of tech support, help, stuff like that. We got a pretty good little community. Yeah, going. everybody's helping each other uh, out. Everybody's yep. been really good, very helpful in it. So this, we're gonna do a three part series. We're gonna do the first part, will be how to set up your jumper slash Tyrannus slash anything opening, anything open using TX. OpenTX. Part two will be on the computer, part of Betaflight, setting up your modes, your switches, kind of in conjunction with your radio. And it's a basic guideline, guys. There is gonna be specifics to certain quads and all that, but generally, uh, for the most part, the quads we carry, this is pretty much going to yeah, be Yeah, and we use this King Kong, the GT8. It works with any kind of e, uh, ET series from King Kong, anything basically. And the third part will be basically troubleshooting. What happens if your quad does not arm or everything we did doesn't work? Yeah. Like over the sum. The what main, happened? Yeah, that would be part three. That would be the, the major questions we get and the most top five questions we get of why your stuff doesn't work. So again, this is going to be for the guys who are just brand new starting out to Betaflight to, to the OpenTX because we get a lot of those questions about OpenTX and what is it coming from Spectrum. They have no idea. They're all afraid of the computer, afraid of mixing. And remember, this is not the only way to do it, but it's a known working way to do right. it. That's what we're trying to right. cover there for someone that has no experience with this and getting them in the air with one of the products we sell. Right. And just one tip, don't start with the first video and the, watch the first minute and jump to the last video. Yeah, and the watch last it in completion, guys. Yeah. All right, so here's part one. I'm gonna plug in here, up here, not the back, that's the multi-module, but at the top of the radio. Okay. I'm gonna select storage, USB storage. Okay. The computer's gonna be, you're gonna have uh, pop-ups about autoplay and removal disk. Don't worry about those, just close them. We need to make sure our OpenTX is set up for the Horus X10, X10S. I'm gonna label this Jumper T16. This is a Jumper T16 Pro with Hall Effect sensors. Does not matter. Jumper T16 is what I'm gonna label it because it'll work with either one. Um, again, Horus X10, X10S. Uh, the multi-module, you can select that. I'm gonna leave that off for now and I'll show you a different way of setting that. Only reason being is if you click the wrong settings, you can get emergency mode to happen. So I'm just gonna leave that off um, I'm going to hit OK here, and then I'm going to read my models. And I have some on here already, but we're going to set up a new model. I'm just going to go to Add Model. Um, I'm going to select, you know what? Yeah, we're going to select Multi Rotor. And my throttle channel is channel 3. My yaw channel is actually channel 4. My pitch channel is 2, and my roll is channel 1. We have three, four, two, one. And don't ask questions, just hit next. Just, yeah. We're not gonna worry about any of those. We're gonna hit, okay, I understand. Now we need to go into the Tiny7, double click it. First thing we need to do is make sure we turn off the internal module. This is important. If you don't turn this off, you'll get emergency mode. That's what that other video is about. If you accidentally forget it, but if you're following this video, you turned it off. We're not gonna worry about the external module right now. And we're gonna go back up. We're gonna go to heli. We're not gonna do anything there. <laughs> you can't, the suspense, I was like, oh my God. The flight mode, it? nothing. Inputs, nothing. Mixes, yes. So this is where we're going to add a channel and what I want to do I'm going to assign these switches and I'm just going to go through and assign all these switches to something um, you can assign whatever you want there's no minimum no maximum really it's the 16 channel receiver uh, so really you got you can do 15 channels because the 16th one is um, RSSI but I'm just going to assign a couple here in this case we're just to make it easy I'm going to do switch F for arming I'm going to do flight modes buzzer uh, adjustments or rates and I'm gonna set these two on a switch just as accessories if I want to do them later on for later something, like on. turtle mode anything like that okay mm -hmm. so first thing is first we're gonna do s source and we're gonna do F and I'm gonna name this arm okay that's my arming switch 
I'm going to hit OK. And here, my second switch. I'm going to do switch B. I'm going to skip these two here. A lot of guys, I actually do flight mode there. Um, but a lot of people use this switch here because you're not using flight modes a lot. So I'm going to go to B, switch B, SB, and I'm going to label that mode. Or, yeah, yeah, we'll do mode there. And then we're going to do C as my buzzer. So we're going to label that buzz. Kill. That's where you come in. <laughs> All right. C. And then D. Switch D. We're going to call that ACC1. Um, okay. And then switch H, which you could use for like a secondary arming switch, pre-arm, etc. And I'm going to just call that accessory two because I don't really have a specific thing that I want at this moment. All right, so let me check that the switch what you got there. Hit OK. So, and you'll see right here, it doesn't give me any names at the moment. So we have one through nine. Is that what we have right now? One through nine. Okay. Now I'm going to go to outputs. And it didn't give me the names, so we're going to go through and name them. So remember, aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder. A-E-T-R. A. A-I-L. E. E-L-E. T. Throttle. R. Rudder. And you can try typing, blah, 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 but see, you kind of run out. So actually, I can do rudder, but you can't do... And it just kind of looks dumb to me, so I'm just going to do... A three letter for everything actually um, and then we arm. got arm we got mo actually I'm gonna do FM flight mode and then we have flight mode buzzer so I'm gonna do buzz three and it's it, two Z's we're good all right fine we'll do one well then flight mode you gotta change that yeah too. no we're gonna do four okay All right, so I labeled those. So I do things a little differently. My brain does one thing, fingers do another, so we're good. Um, all right, so one thing I'm gonna do is go through here. I'm gonna adjust my minimum maximum on most free sky receivers. 97.7 uh, negative and positive makes it 1,000 and 2,000 on the flight controller. Um, so what I'm gonna go through here is just type in 97, through and change it, 97. 0.7, let me move that cursor out of the way so you guys can see that. So it's negative 97.7. I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste, but you'll see it's control V, so I'm just gonna go through and paste every single one on my nine channels that I've used. And you gotta make sure everything's highlighted, otherwise it won't paste over. And all then nine channels, okay. All nine channels. On maximum, I'm gonna go through and make it 97.7. So it's a positive number. Control C, ah, Control V. So we're just going, trying to click too fast and it's not working. There, you got like triple click. All right, so we got those there. Um, now that we got that set, we're gonna ignore the curves, logical switches. You could do other things if you want, like sound files, stuff like that. Uh, special functions as well, telemetry, we're not going to worry about any of that because this is our Scion OSD. Um, so now we got that there. If you wanted to assign a timer and all that, you can. We're going to double check. Let's do a timer. Timer is important. Let's do it. All right. So in this case, we're going to go through, scroll down. We're looking for throttle start or throttle percent. We're going to do throttle percent because if you're not full throttle, the timer will yeah. be a little longer. Um, countdown. I like to do that to voice. You like the voice? All right. Yeah. We're going to do that. Minute call I like to do too. All right, and then do you want manual reset or what? Yeah. No, just, yeah, it doesn't matter. All right. All right. Let's name that, that to be just flight time. Flight, yeah. Timer. Yep. <laughs> All right. All right, and we're gonna make that a. Let's just do three minutes because it's good go. to do a lower timer. You can always go back and increase it. Mm -hmm. um, but a three-minute time flight time is more than uh, enough for your first couple flights to make sure you don't over discharge okay. your batteries. And now we got that. We're going to close that here. And then we're going to write your models to radio. And for some reason, it doesn't tell you anything on this one. I'm going to 
Yeah, I don't like the way. I'm going to just read the models again. Okay. And go through and double check. It's there. Again, I want to make sure for sure that the internal RF is off. Otherwise, it will cause emergency mode. And you can close one of those if you want. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to leave that open. And then we are going to write again. Just make sure. Then I'm going to unplug here. Uh, go into my model select. Tiny 7. Select the model. Now what we have to do is select the receiver style. And this is where we're going to do binding as well. Since we're already going to have to bind it, that's why I decided to do the internal RF here. Um, you can scroll through. And see this is what we did with the timer earlier. You have that. Um, go down. We're going to go to internal RF. We're going to leave that off. External RF. We're going to turn it to multi. You, you want to take it to free sky, but make sure you do multi. Because that's everyone's first yeah, instant. The, I think there is. A, yeah, I think you're right. There is a free sky one in here, isn't there? That's everyone's first mistake. Yeah, so none of that's there. So you got to go to multi. Then you got to go over a couple. It's like two over free sky. In this case, the AC900 receiver is D16. It does have D8 mode, unlike some of the other radios out there. There's all kinds of stuff. So... D16, D8. Um, we're going to do D16, not D16, 8 channel. If you're only sending a few channels, you can do that. Um, we're going to go D16. And this case, I'm going to assign mine. This is model like 13, I believe. Look at number 13. And then I have it ready for binding. So now we're going to go to the quad. Go here. And I need my USB plug. So we're going to bind the receiver. So in order to bind the receiver, I have to push and hold the button here. And this is the AC900. Push and hold the button and plug in either the, on this particular one, battery or USB at the same time. I'm going to do battery because most quads are battery. We have the flashing green. It's ready to bind. You can hear the chirping from bind. Solid red light means it's bound. Now if you have an RXSR, XM, etc., they have their own bind procedures. You'll have to consult the manual for those. I'm going to unplug that. Um, and this quad I don't need. I'm going to check this. Some quads you do, some quads you don't. Plug it in. We have power on the receiver with USB only, so I'm not going to worry about the battery. If you have diatones or the larger ET series, um, you will need a battery for the receiver to work. So if the receiver's not on, that's because you don't have a battery on. Hmm. In this case, it's working, so we're just going to leave it there. All right, good job. That's part one, jumper slash OpenTX configurations. Anything, any tips you want to get with everybody? Again, this works with a jumper. This works with the X9D from FreeSky. This works with the QX7 S series. Yeah, anything running OpenTX. So don't let this fool you. And don't let this fool you because it works with pretty much anything that's running this particular software, which is Betaflight. Yep. Yeah. All right. There we go.